All Affinity apps have alignment functionality that lets you align objects to your document or to each other and distribute them evenly. You can also unify the scale and rotation of multiple objects. I'll show you a couple of examples in Affinity Designer. Here I'm working on a planner. I'll use the pen tool to create a simple curve that will act as a line for writing on. I'll select the pen tool from the tools panel and click to begin the curve. I'll hold shift to keep it horizontal and click again to place a second node. Then I'll press escape to end the curve. Now I'll press V to switch to the move tool and duplicate this line using Command and J on Mac or Control and J on Windows. I'll position it below the first curve. Then I can use Command or Control and J again to power duplicate another line below. These might be a bit too close together to write on, so I'll move the last one a little bit lower. Next, I'll click drag to select all of the curves and go up to the toolbar and open the Align and Distribute dialog. Here I have horizontal and vertical alignment options. The first three will align your objects and the fourth will distribute them evenly. I'll look at the vertical align options and select space vertically. This way I can control where the first and last objects are positioned and I know the objects in the middle are spaced consistently. I can also control the distance between objects by disabling auto distribute and using the slider instead or I can manually input a measurement. For example, I might want my spacing to be eight millimeters. Then I can click apply to commit the setting. Next, I'm going to create some ellipses for the habit tracker. First, I'll select the ellipse tool from the tools panel and I'll drag out a small circle. Rather than power duplicate, this time I'll take advantage of the quick grid functionality. While still holding the left mouse button, I'll tap the right arrow key six times to create six more ellipses. I can also hold the right arrow key to add spacing between the ellipses. Before I release the mouse button, I'll hold shift to maintain the correct aspect ratio, then release the mouse button. Now I'll switch back to the move tool and position the first ellipse below the M for Monday. I could position the first and last ones like before but I also have the option to nominate a key object and space the other objects around it. I'll position the second object underneath the T for Tuesday. Now I'll select them all and hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and click it to nominate it as the key object. Key objects are indicated by a thick blue outline and the layer on the Layers panel has a lighter overlay. This time I'll go to the Alignment dialog and select space horizontally. The default behavior is that the furthest left and the furthest right objects will stay in place and all objects in between are distributed evenly. Nominating a key object replaces this behavior and instead the other objects are distributed based on the position of the nominated object in relation to the leftmost object. In this case, the space between the first object and the nominated object has been replicated across the other objects. This is the same for other objects within the order too. I'll undo this action, and this time I'll choose to nominate the fourth object. I'll move it into position under the T for Thursday. Select them all, and hold Option and click the fourth ellipse to nominate it. When I horizontally distribute the objects, the first and the fourth objects stay in place. The second and third objects are distributed evenly between the first and the fourth object which is nominated, and the spacing is continued across the rest of the objects. There is one more spacing behavior to be aware of. If you hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows, when you select space horizontally, it will consider the position of the nominated object and the furthest right object instead. I'll just select the Active button again to disable it, and then select it without the option modifier to space them in line with the days above. Clicking away on the document will also commit the dialog settings. Next, let's look at the alignment options. Here I'm working on some illustrations and I can choose to align them in different ways. I'll select them all by clicking the top group on the layers panel, holding shift and then selecting the bottom group. I can click through the alignment options to preview their effects. 
and I can click the currently selected option to return to the original layout. For this piece, I might try the Vertically Align Middle option. This has aligned them to the middle of the selection box. Alternatively, I could open the Align To options and choose to align them to the centre of the artboard instead. At the bottom of the dialog are the Make Same options. Here I can make all of the selected objects the same width, height and rotation. I'll click Height and then check Maintain Aspect Ratio for proportional scaling. Now all of the objects are the same height as the first selected object, which was this plant at the top of the layer stack. As with distribution, the Make Same options also consider key objects. So I'll just option click this last group to nominate it, and then open the alignment dialog again. This time, when I make the same height, the other objects will become the same height as the nominated object. I'll just enable Maintain Aspect Ratio again. Now all that's left to do is select the Space Horizontally option and then click Apply. Finally, I'll centre the five groups on the artboard. I can't align them to the middle because they're not in one group. To avoid having to group them, I can just make sure that snapping is enabled on the toolbar and then move them into position until I see the red and green snapping indicators. These let me know that the selection is now horizontally and vertically aligned to the centre of the artboard. Then I can release the mouse button. So that was a look at the alignment and distribution options in Affinity Designer. Thanks for watching.